Welcome back to All This Math. This is Professor Parker. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Also turn on the post notifications so you'll be alerted when we drop new videos. All right. Also, you can also follow us on Instagram. Um, we also put in content on Instagram as well, reels and, you know, things of that nature. Check out my t-shirt. I got a Amir Car Cabral t-shirt on today. Amir Car Cabral is something very, someone very important that you should know about. Um, he was a revolutionary Pan-Africanist leader from West Africa, from Guinea-Bissau, Cape Verde Islands, from that region. He was a leader in a group called PAIGC that was fighting tooth and nail against Portuguese colonialism, Portuguese colonialism. So when you think about Portugal, right, remember, they colonized a lot of countries on the continent, all right? They also colonized Brazil. So what we know of as Brazil today, that's, that was a Portuguese colony. It really still is a Portuguese colony, for real, for real, if we really want to get technical. Um, but there were many brothers and sisters that was fighting back against co colonialism and also neo-colonialism. And Amir Khan Cabal was one of those people, um, also a brother that was heavy into STEM. He earned a degree in agricultural engineering. And through that, he was able to understand the connection between land and freedom and land and revolution, right? So understanding that, quant having that quantitative analysis ability really helped him to really see like the vision for liberation, all right? So that's what we do here on this channel. That's why we be talking about math and we also be talking about history and, and things of that nature. So if you're unfamiliar with Amir Carl Cabral, go look him up, go check out some of his writings, um, find out some of the writing that's been done about him. And if you are familiar with Amir Carl Cabral, continue to study the brother, continue to learn more about him. All right. Now, today we're going to be solving a multi-step equation. Now, if you take a look at this equation, there's a lot going on in this equation. All right. Do not get intimidated, though. We're going to do it step by step. Just like people say, how do you eat an African elephant? This is the proverb. How do you eat an African elephant? One bite at a time. All right. One bite at a time. We're going to do this problem one step at a time. So let's first read it. Right. And our instructions are to solve for x, which means we want to find what value of x in terms of a number is going to, that we can would be able to substitute in this equation wherever we see an x at and end up with a true statement, right? So some number on the left side is going to be equal to some value on the other side, all right? True statement. All right, so first we have 11 minus 4 times the quantity x plus 1 minus 3 is equal to or is the same as 11 plus 2 times the quantity 4 minus 2x minus 16. All right? That's a lot, you know? But it's a few things we could do as our first step, right? It's a few things we could do. But what I like to do typically, when I see an equation that's got parentheses in it, I like to get rid of the parentheses. I want to get rid of them, right? I want to get rid of parentheses. That's just that's just my, my protocol, my flow. I want to get rid of the parentheses. So the way I get rid of the parentheses is I use what we call the distributive property. So the number that's directly in front of the parentheses to the left, like here it is four and here it is positive two. I mean, this negative four. Actually, this is not a four, really. This is really a negative four because of that, that minus sign. Let's be clear. This is really a negative four, not a positive four. You multiply this negative four by each term inside here. You multiply this two by each term inside here. All right. So we're going to do negative four times X and we're going to do negative four times one. Now, make sure you do the negative four times the one. A very common error with distributive property is that people will multiply by the first term in the parentheses, but they won't multiply by the second term in the parentheses. Make sure you're fair, right? We got to be fair. You want to give the negative four, you're going to distribute the negative four to everything inside the parentheses, all right? You don't want to discriminate. You don't want to leave nobody out, right? You don't want the one to be left out. And over here, you want to distribute the two to the four and also distribute the two to the negative two X, right? You want to do both. All right, so let's do that. So the 11 is not going to change. So we're going to bring the 11 down. Then we're going to have minus 4x. Then we're going to have minus 4. Then we're going to have minus 3. All right? We got our equal sign. Right? See, the parentheses are going over there. Parentheses going. And then we got 11. Bring it down. Then we plus 8. And then we minus 4x. And then we're minus 16. So look what we got. Parentheses are going. We have used the distributive property. Okay? Now, what I like to do next is combine like terms. So remember... If you see parentheses, get rid of them, right? Get rid of parentheses. Next thing, combine like terms if there are any. Now, what are like terms? First of all, all numbers are alike. All numbers that don't have variables attached to them are alike. Big numbers, small numbers, negatives, positives, decimals, fractions, radicals, they're all alike. So they can be added and subtracted and consolidated into single terms, 
all right? So like this 11, this negative 4, and this negative 3. We can add them together and combine them and put them into one term. So I can do 11, take away 4, which is 7. 7, take away 3, which is positive 4. So now I got negative 4x plus 4. Now make sure you know where that 4 came from. It came from doing 11 minus the 4, which is 7, and 7 minus the 3, which is 4. Positive 4. Now you might be wondering, well, what about the negative 4x? Now I didn't finish my explanation of like terms. My fault. Variables. All variables that have the same exponent are like terms. So I see a negative 4x over here. There are no other x terms over here. And also like terms have to be on the same side of the equal sign in order, in order to be combined, right? There's no other x to the first term over here. You got x to the first term over here, but not over, the, not over, not over there. No more over there, all right? So if you got x squared and x squared, you got 2x squared and 3x squared, they're like terms, all right? Um, same variable, same exponent. Same variable, same exponent. Those are like terms. If they the same variable, but different exponents, they're not like terms. X squared and X third, not like terms. It don't matter that they're both X's. It don't matter. When it comes to addition and subtraction, you can't add them. You can't put them together. You can multiply them or divide them together, but understand, addition and subtraction has one set of rules. Multiplication and division has another set of rules. And these are rules that we have to learn, and we learn them through practice by doing a lot of problems, solving a lot of equations. Naturally, we develop a, mu a type of muscle memory for math, right? But it, there's no shortcut, right? You can watch this video, that's cool, this video was a guide, but watching this video is not enough. You actually learn by watching the video and then going forth and doing practice problems on your own or in a group of people, in a collective, in a community of people, all right? Getting down and just doing problems. That's how you really learn, all right? Now, on the right-hand side, let's collect like terms. So I see an 11, I see an 8, and I see a negative 16. 11 plus 8, we got to know our addition facts. 11 plus 8 is 19. 19 minus 16 is 3. So now we got 3 minus 4x. All right? So now, this says negative 4x plus 4 is equal to 3 minus 4x. Let me, let me rewrite this. We can, we can take a different perspective on this. So what if it said negative 4x plus 4 is equal to negative 4x plus 3? Right? Because we could change the order around because addition is commutative. Because this was a positive 3 and that's a negative 4x. So if you're showing them as being put together, this is the same as saying negative 4x plus 3. Because that's a positive 3. So positive 3 minus 4x is the same thing as saying negative 4x plus 3. Because that was a positive 3. Alright? Um, just look at this for a minute. Does this make sense? Negative 4, negative 4x plus 4 is the same as negative 4x plus 3. How could they both be the same? How can they be the same as each other? This plus 4 is the same as this plus 3? That's like saying, imagine this was like $20. Imagine negative 4x was $20. It was something different. How can $20 plus $4 be the same as $20 plus $3? It can't. It's not the same. So when you encounter a situation like this, when you're solving an equation, the answer is... And you can actually stop right here. The answer is no solution. There is no solution to this problem. Because we have a false statement. We're given a false statement, right? There's no way that some value, right? It don't matter what value you substitute in here for X. This will never be a true statement. Because whatever value this ends up being is going to be the same as this value over here. And how can that value plus 4 be the same as that same value plus 3? It can't be the same. Right? This is what we call a, uh, a solution that doesn't solve, like Dr. King said. Solutions that don't solve, answers that don't um, answer, and explanations that don't explain. Right? This is one of those examples. But, let, but we can work it further. We can work it further because I want you to see something. So let's say we still try to isolate X by itself. So if we try to isolate X by itself, one way we can do that is this. Let's say I want to isolate the X's on the left-hand side. So let's say I want to get rid of this X right here, right? So I do the opposite of negative 4X. I could transpose, but I'm gonna, I feel like doing something different. I'm going to use the inverse property of addition right now. So to get rid of this negative 4X, I'm going to add 4X, right? But because it's an equation, we need to be balanced. So if I add 4X on the right, I need to add 4X on the left. So I'm going to do plus 4X over here and plus 4X over here. That becomes zero. But look, this becomes zero also. 
So that's zero, right? Zero plus four is four. Equal sign. What you left with over here? Three. Four equals three. Now that's just a that's just a straight lie. I if somebody try to tell you four is the same thing as three, they lying to you, right? It's just like if somebody owe you four dollars and then they come to you saying, "Listen, I'm about to give you three dollars." It's really the same thing. It's cool. We call it even, right? I'm gonna give you three dollars. I owe you four dollars. Or actually, no, I owe you four hundred thousand dollars, right? But I'm gonna give you three hundred thousand, and I'm gonna just tell you that they're the same. They lying. They lying. But this is the type of like maneuvering and very creative mathematics that people do. Like banks do it. Some businesses do it. Um, you know, corporations. You know, uh, government entities. You know. This is how groups get exploited, right? And when you don't understand things through a mathematical lens, somebody can rob you without a gun. They'll smile in your face, right? They'll smile in your face, rob you without a gun and try to tell you that four equals three or four is the same as three. Because when we see an equal sign, it also means is the same as. So you have to consider that definition of the equal sign because math is a language, right? We have to know how to translate the terms in mathematics. This equal sign can be seen as the phrase is the same as. So four is not the same as three. And we know that. No matter how much somebody tried to tell you four is the same as three, you know four ain't the same as three. So when you, I say all this to say, when you solve an equation, you go through all the steps properly and the variables cancel out and you end up with a lie, then the answer is no solution. Meaning there is no solution. Meaning there's no number in the whole universe that you could plug in for X which would render us a true statement. There is no number. You can go through any number. I, you could try it, try it. Go ahead. You know, if you got some time to waste, go ahead. Try a bunch of numbers. It don't matter what number. It could be 100. It could be a big number, 2 million. It could be a decimal, like 0.28. It doesn't matter. With the combination of these numbers and the combination of these numbers, you will never get a true statement, right? So there is no solution to this. And that brings me back to another point that I was making in a, another recent video is that when we solve equations, we have three potential outcomes, right? The first outcome is that there's one single number that is the solution. There is a solution and it's a single number, right? The second outcome is that all real numbers or any number could be a solution. That happens too. If the variables cancel out and you're left with a true statement, like let's say they said four equals four. That's a true statement. Four is four. That would mean that the answer was all real numbers, meaning you could take any number in the whole real number system, plug it in for X or substitute it in for X, do the math, and then you end up with the same value on the left side as the right side and everything balances and everything is good. Everything balances just like my yacht from ancient Kemet, right? That's what, that's the second option or this option, third option, which is there's no solution. There's no solution. When the variables cancel out and you're left with a lie, there's no solution. So think, lie, no solution. Truth, all real numbers. Or there's a single value. So they, there are three possibilities when we're solving equations. There's a single solution, right? Right, one number, just one number. Or when the variables cancel out, you got two options. When the variables cancel out and the variables are gone, right? Whether the variable is X, Y, Z, A, B, it don't matter what the variable is. But when the variables end up canceling out, because of you following the proper steps to solve an equation and you end up with a true statement, that means that there is all real numbers could be a solution. Any number could be a solution. Three could be the answer. Four could be the answer. Negative V, 29, 2 trillion. Any number could be the answer. A fraction, a decimal, a radical. Any number could be the answer. Or when the variables cancel out and there's a lie, that means there's no solution. There's no answer to this. We cannot answer this. So therefore, the answer is that there is, in fact, no answer. There's no solution. All right. So now you don't encounter you don't encounter these types of problems sometimes. Um, but again, I've showed you the steps and how to solve equations. But I, as I said, you master this by going to do practice on your own. Use this video as a guide and go get some practice on your own. Ask your teacher or your professor or whomever or go online and, and research and find some worksheets online that have a lot of um, multi-step equations. That's what this is called, a multi-step equation. Right. You can even type in multi-step equations with parentheses, right? Go find some problems and practice and I will catch up with you on the next video. Peace.